Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sean at Shock Surplus, and today we are going to look at Rancho Shocks versus Fox Shocks. Uh, we sometimes get this question what the difference is. Um, we see it all over our product pages, and some of you called in asking which one you should go with. <clears throat> uh, from our perspective, they're really not in the same kind of realm of use. Um, the Fox Shock is probably is very kind of high performance, entry level off road performance. Um, most of the Rancho shocks are entry level performance, and we'll go over the details of each individual version. Right here, I have the Rancho RS 5000X. This is their basically recently upgraded 5000 shock. So the X just means now it's nitrogen gas charged, uh, 150 psi roughly. This is their RS 7000 um, monotube design shock. So this RS7000 MT has been kind of designed um, very similarly to the Bilstein 5100 series that um, some of you may be aware of. Um, so it's a monotube design. It's got an internal floating piston, nitrogen gas um, chamber down below. Um, that gas chamber has acts on acts as resistance to the main piston in the main chamber. Whereas the RS5000X <clears throat> has a twin it's a twin tube design, which means there's an outer chamber that you can't obviously can't see, but the inner chamber kind of looks like this, and then there's an additional outer tube uh, of the main chamber in this shock uh, that holds the oil uh, and the gas charge. The RS9000, which is <clears throat> one of Rancho's more famous options, a lot of people hear about it. This is a pretty beefy shock. Um, this body here is actually thicker than the Fox body by pretty close. I know some of the RS9000 bodies are uh, two and a quarter or even two, uh, yeah, two and an eighth inch uh, in uh, thickness, whereas all of these Fox 2.0s are two inches thick. Um, so what does that mean? Um, that means just a lot of oil volume within this shock. This is still a twin tube um, gas shock though. This is still, still a twin tube shock. So while this body is really thick, you got to think about there's actually, a you actually need space for um, an oil, basically an oil sleeve underneath this tube and then the main uh, active tube, tube within. So I believe the active piston in these shocks is around 40 millimeters, um, maybe 38 millimeters, don't quote me on that. Um, the Fox 2.0 uh, main piston is roughly 46, 47 millimeters, and um, the piston in this is 46 millimeters, um, mimicking Bill Stein's 5100. So, you look at the bodies, you look at the body of these shocks, and um, damping, damping consistency comes down to um, surface area of that piston. So, the surface area of this piston on the oil is actually greater than this thicker shock. Um, this shock might have more oil, but you're gonna see a little bit more consistent ride out of the 7000 in most cases. This uh, RS9000 though has a, um, an adjustable knob down here, which is what they're known for. This basically controls compression. Um, and what that means is when you're going over a bump, um, lower compression is gonna allow that shock to um, be very loose in the response. So that's your, the spring energy or your torsion bars on your truck are gonna eat up a lot of that bump uh, with little help from the shock. Um, if you turn the compression all the way up, <clears throat> it, <clears throat> that, the shock is gonna provide a lot more resistance to that bump um, and help the spring slow down a, a lot more. So typically we recommend a lot of uh, guys with heavy duty rigs, um, towing rigs, um, off-road rigs like these shocks because for the highway, you typically just turn them all the way down, uh, really loose, um, you get your plushest response. Um, and then off-road, when you're kind of picking up speed, you really need to make sure you got good control, traction, don't get sent on some kind of random obstacle that you didn't see. Um, you turn them up and you'll have a lot of good road feedback. Might not have good road comfort, but when we're off-road, we're really worried about feedback and control and traction. Um, the Fox Shock, um, is very similar, is more similar to the RS7000 than uh, 
uh, the 9000. Um, this is a single monotube design shock as well, so um, there is a piston attached to this piston rod. There is an internal floating piston, and then there is a gas chamber down below. Um, so all of this is operating in a single same chamber. What really differentiates uh, the Fox shock from an RS7000 or any of these other shocks is that uh, all the seals in this shock um, are race level, very high end. Um, I don't have the specifics on materials, I'm sorry, that doesn't really matter in this comparison though. Um, the high pressure gas in here is roughly 200 and 250 psi, whereas these RS7000s are closer to 150 to 200. Um, the shock oil in, in here, the viscosity is quite a bit different than the oil you'll see in a mass-produced shock. Um, the welds and rod ends here uh, in the Fox product are stronger. Um, as you can see, there's, this is a single body um, from the, the main aluminum body into the mounts is all single. Whereas here, this is a steel body and it's welded. So points of failure, Points of failure, we've seen them there. Um, this RS9000 is welded mounts as well, points of failure. Um, more points of failure just mean less high performance capable. Uh, when you think about a Fox shock, these things have been ran the gamut of all types of aggressive off-road terrain. It's not just marketing talk. Um, Fox does test all their stuff thousands of miles before it reaches production. Um, so you do pay uh, really good money for really good performance. One thing that Fox doesn't tell you about these shocks, though, is that um, depending on how much dirt they see, you're going to have to rebuild them roughly 50,000 miles, give or take 10,000 miles. Um, and that's because the seals inside, um, while they're excellent, they're excellent for um, the intended use of high performance. Um, they're not long lasting because they're wiping, wiping the dirt off this piston rod constantly. Um, the oil gets uh, Oil gets real dirty inside. Um, if there's any nicks on these rods, it'll damage the seals. And that's usually the case for any of these, but these are more throwaway shocks. Um, when these shocks go bad, you're gonna replace them and it won't be that big of a deal. This RS7000, roughly $80 a shock. This, this Fox 2.0 is roughly $160 a shock. So it's a little bit more worth it to rebuild these. You aren't ever gonna rebuild these you're just going to replace them. So generally, if people are considering uh, Fox uh, or Rancho, um, we, we really ha want to have a conversation with you about your vehicle and really truly get at the heart of what you need. Uh, what, do you need more road comfort? Do you need more um, ride control? Do you need better handling while you're towing? Um, all these things are much a big consideration. Uh, there isn't one shock that's going to be the best for every vehicle. So don't let forums or um, other people that you may not know like drive your uh, decision on equipment for your vehicle because everyone has different driving styles, preferences, and uses for their vehicle. So all of these shocks have their intended use and their intended vehicle. So if you have any questions regarding your specific application, um, leave a comment, send us a message, send us an email. We'd love to help out. Thanks so much for watching.